Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night. And the most important updates are coming from Yemen. We have lots of interesting details and to be more precise, this night the United States of America started their, let's say, military operation uh, in this uh, country. And uh, we got the first, we started receiving the first updates uh, somewhere at, let's say, at 1, 2 a.m. of the local time. Let's call it like this. For example, the first update we got is that Joe Biden, the U.S. president, is expected to make a statement tonight in the wake of military strikes against the Houthi targets in Yemen. The strikes are expected shortly with a series of carefully uh, targeted statements from the United States, the UK and other international allies to follow. So that was something like the first update and after that we got a lot of speculations, a lot of talks. The next thing we received is update from the United Kingdom where the Prime Minister of uh, United Kingdom also uh, has a uh, authorized the military uh, strikes against the Houthis. So this update we received somewhere at 1 a.m. let's say of the uh, local time. Rishi Sunak has authorized British air strikes against Houthi military positions in Yemen to repel attacks by the Iran-backed rebels on shipping in the Red Sea. The United Kingdom is expected to join the US and other allies in the carrying out the mission immediately. Houthi attacks have seriously disrupted the international commerce on what is the key road between Europe and Asia. And the strike has begun. Uh, during the night, according to information we have, uh, say, uh, let's say by the morning of the local time, we received, let's say, the first updates. And according to information we have, the US Air Force said it fired more than 100 cruise missiles at 16 cities in Yemen and hit 60 targets at those cities. We got a lot of updates from Yemen itself. Uh, the first strikes took place according to the, the first unconfirmed information, which later was confirmed by the local sources. The first strike took place in the city by the name of Hadea. Uh, later we got some pictures, some results of first strikes and according to at least this picture as you can see the strikes took place all over the entire Yemen. And uh, furthermore uh, we got started receiving some videos and some videos let's say uh, according to information to the source this is the uh, scenes the first footage of strikes and explosions in the international airport of Sana. Of course during the previous night a lot of footage a lot of videos were published and lots of them were fake even this video was published for example for some from local uh, sources but um, I can't even tell you whether it's real video or it's uh, let's say another fake or something like this but uh, most of the let's say pro Yemeni sources reported that the coalition haven't managed to achieve results so those were attacks they managed to destroy probably some position to damage some buildings but uh, that wasn't the results that probably everybody was expecting Furthermore, according to information we have, uh, coalition attacks have ended uh, and the United States warns of possibility of attacking Yemeni troops again. So that was like, uh, as we discussed at the beginning, short attack. Uh, so and, uh, and that means that probably there are very high chances that this attack wouldn't be repeated. But if uh, the escalation continues, of course, the United States and coalition will continue attacks. Multiple positions have been attacked today on Yemeni soil while Sana forces have managed to damage an American ship and presumably shut down a fighter jet near Sana. So this is the updates we have. Further, we got another report, another uh, let's say confirmation from different sources that yet Hosi claims they downed a US F-22 over Sana. Of course, we haven't received any geolocated video confirmation of that. Furthermore, uh, other sources reported that the ships, uh, United States ships were damaged as well. And uh, today, the United States of America, as we discussed, launched around 100 missiles, uh, uh, cruise missiles at 68 cities. And we got, let's say, the first photo of that attack, uh, the launch of Tomahawk from one of the American destroyers. So the situation is going to escalate. And during these attacks, of course, other sources reported that uh, Iranian forces, Iranian, let's say, force started resistant groups in Iraq began attack U.S. bases. There was a lot of waves of attacks.
Probably today we're gonna receive more details about those clashes. Furthermore, as you know, the uh, sky above Yemen was closed, and currently there are um, like British planes uh, spotted in Qatar airspace. They who were heading to Yemeni, and now there are a lot of reconnaissance uh, aircrafts that are flying somewhere around above Saudi Arabia that try to collect as many as possible, as much as possible information about the situation. The United States and coalition have created, collected significant fleet in this area. Obviously, they are not afraid of anything, at least for now. But you know that uh, Yemeni has a significant, let's say, range of different types of missiles and drones. And when the Russians started their special military operations, they also didn't expect that Ukrainians were able to shut down their, let's say, main cruiser Moscow. And the same story probably we can expect in this area, because obviously the Yemeni will receive the necessary weapon to destroy the United States and coalition fleet. It's not going to be very fast, slowly, step by step, but the chances are. So we'll see. And I'll remind you that the turning point point in the beginning of Yemeni operation, as I understand, was the story was the uh, was the uh, ship that was captured by the Iranian special forces. To tell the truth, this ship uh, used to um, be captured uh, was captured by the U.S. few years ago, and just yesterday, while this ship was um, uh, going through the Persian Gulf, this ship was recap oil tanker was recaptured by Iranian forces. Maybe that was the turning point when the United the states uh, took a decision to uh, let's say after this humiliation to start this operation so we'll see but anyway we understand that the situation is critical the situation is bad and the thing is that the united states of america currently is stretched between different regions between yemen between israeli between ukraine and also there are a lot of problems in the united states itself we have a lot of different updates from this um, situation for example once again uh, the united states published some uh, some information some updates regarding the first hours of attacks and the, the united states central command reported that on january 11th at 2 a.m sun at time the US central command forces in coordination with the united kingdom and support from australia canada and netherlands and bahrain conduct joint strikes on Houthi targets uh, to degrade their capabilities to continue their illegal uh, and reckless attacks on the u.s and international vessels commerce shippings in the red sea so that was the final report about those strikes but once again uh the thing is that uh the thing is that um, according to some uh uh, United States Congressman, the President uh, Joe Biden needs to come to Congress before launching a strike against the Houthis in Yemen and involving United States in another Middle East conflict. That is Article uh, 1 of the Constitution. I will stand up for that regardless of whether a Democrat or Republicans is in the White House. Those were the words of Rokan, another Congressman. So obviously today there are going to be a small inv investigation about the situation but uh, when talking about Ukraine and Israeli. Now we can rank the let's say media influence and media loudness of every conflict. Currently, the first uh, thing is for the United States and for the world media is Yemeni. The second one is Israeli. But when talking about Israel, the United States have a lot of problems because, as you know, today there is a there is a process in the Hague about the genocide, the possible genocide that was uh, made in um, Gaza by Israeli forces. The U.S. Department has already reported that they are closely following the discussion in Hag, uh, Hag argumenting arguments that Israel is committing genocide. Uh, arguments that Israel is committing genocide are unfounded. The charge of genocide, one of the most serious, is in the legal code must be brought forward with great caution. I'll remind you that Vladimir Putin, the president of Russian Federation, was already, you know, let's say, uh, according to them, according to the Western countries, broke the law and has already, I don't know, uh, committed genocide in Ukraine. And uh, that, that that situation and that warranty bypass so easy without any, let's say, discussions and without anything like we can see about Israel and Gaza. And if we compare the Russian situation, let's say the Israeli situation, the Russians just to save kids and little babies and little children and to evacuate them from the combat line, took a decision just to evacuate them from the combat line to save their lives. And that was the reason why 
the uh, let's say international court uh, ordered made the warranty to arrest Putin and uh, make him the criminal the let's say world criminal and when talking about Israeli thousands tens of thousands of people died as a result of bombings and now we are talking about some discussions anyway the situation develops very interesting in this direction and this is a huge problem for Ukraine because according to information we have the John Kirby have reported that uh, there are going to be no help uh, for Ukraine and that United States of America sent Ukrainians the final pocket the final military pocket and obviously the situation for Ukraine is going to be very bad but it's too early to say that Ukrainians will be without money because there is European Union and in the very near future you should allocate about 30 billion euro billion euro which are already being printed but the problem is uh, there is also a problem and the main problem about European Union, European Union support is Germany of course because this is the engine of Europe and if Germany is able to send Ukrainians the money then the European entire European Union is going to be able to do this but we know that there are strikes in the country and a week of action in Germany already resembles a people's war uh, transing, uh, rise, uh, rising uh, tensions are rising in Germany due to mass protest by farmers protesting against cuts in tax breaks for agriculture. So there are, I, I believe you are familiar with the situation. We saw lots of vehicles. The central, uh, the central Berlin was tightly blocked by tractors. A number of large cities are blocked by agricultural machinery. Hamburg. Cologne, Bremen and others up to 2000 structures have been announced in to participate in the promotions so the situation is very bad for all of Scholz, not for Germany. Germany's people from Germany are fighting for their freedom, fighting for the level of life they used to have before the special military operation because they know that they can do and they can continue living like they were living before the special military operation. But all of Scholz is probably doing some things that people don't understand. So this is the reason of the strikes. And this is another reason why Ukraine might not get another military help from the European Union. When talking about Zelensky himself today, he also talked a lot and his main position is that before the, uh, the elections in, in Russian Federation, Putin is going to start another tactical offensive operation. This is not going to be strategical offensive operation, just a short tactical that probably will give the Russians some territory gains. Let's say some few small cities or villages will be captured, but this is going to be a very good media victory for Russia before the present election. So Zelensky is very afraid of this and he understands that he's not going to receive anything and he don't have any possibilities to count and to rely on anything. So we'll see what is going to be next because the present elections in Russia is going to take place within a month uh, in the March. So that's why there are not so many time left and obviously the operation should have started like uh, should start it like from day to another. So let's say maybe the next week or in two weeks. But let's say to get some uh, some progress, they need this operation should be started very soon so be to be to be finished by the end of before the present elections when talking about the situation on the ground in ukraine the most important updates are coming from solidar direction the russians forces continue moving along the railways from beristov in direction of Vyimka by passing visiola and today the ukrainian sources published a series of videos of fpv drone strikes against the russian forces in this area and as a result of those strikes the russian soldiers were wounded which but this video first of all confirms so finally we got the confirmation of russian progress in this area and as a result of attack uh, the russians managed to establish control over additional squares along the railways but the russian this is not the main let's say purpose the russians are planning to continue further and they will move because as i understand the moving along the railways is the best thing the russians can do and if they are able to get let's say so far far and to force the Ukrainians to step back then we're gonna see that Visola, the main Ukrainian stronghold in this area is will, will be not just let's say encircled or half encircled but it's going to be a cauldron because from this moment the Ukrainians will lose possibilities to evacuate from this area without losses and the battle for Visola will be finished uh, when talking about other direction we haven't received anything anything important during the night just updates important updates uh, are coming from 
from Rabotina. We have during the previous 24 hours published significant number of FPV drone strikes and some updates from different mappers showing that the Russians have some certain progress in this area and according to at least Syriac maps the Russians as a result of offensive operation managed to establish control additionally over this territory. Furthermore the Russians started clearing and storming Ukrainian positions along this tree line and the Russians uh, started clearing this uh, territory along this tree line which means that the Russians have some certain plans to conduct a local offensive operation and to improve their positions a little bit to the north from this area and to the east from this direction. So we see that the Russians are pretty focused and the battle for Robotina has started because if the southern defense belt, let's let's add this on map, if this uh, uh, western, southern and eastern defense belt fall, uh, then the Russians will be able to enter Robotina itself and then they're going to be a completely different story. Uh, the thing is that I have about the Ukraine, what is the Russian tactical plans, uh, tactical offensive operation before the election period of time? Probably something interesting the Russians are planning to make and this is going to be a real surprise and not just to Ukraine but to NATO and Western countries as well. And that's it for this video. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.